So here is a common pond plant at the nature center who easily disperses its seeds using the pond. The seeds of this iris, this is a yellow iris, the seeds of this iris, when they land on the surface of the water, they float. And so they can float easily from one side of the pond to the next. So there's a lot of plants mixed in here, but the iris are the plants, their leaves are the big, wide um, leaves. So I'll get in here a little bit closer. So here we can see the leaves of the iris. There's many of them. Um, there's multiple plants all kind of clustered together here. And if you look there in the center, there are some seed pods. So the pods start out sort of green like those and eventually they will turn to brown. I see a brown one in here. There is a pod right there. The pod is brown and you can see it's starting to split open. So there's kind of two things happening here. First the pod is drooping. So it is drooping down. It's facing down instead of facing up when they are when they first start developing. And then as the pod dries out and starts to crack open, you can see the seeds right there peeking out. And there's another pod up here. And you can actually see inside of this one. There they are. All those seeds lined up in a nice neat row. When that pod opens up all the way, those seeds will fall out. And if they land in the water, they will float in the water. And they'll use the current of the water to drift around. And if they land in the right spot, somewhere else along the shoreline here, another iris will begin to grow. And so you can see all of the irises that we have here along the edge of the pond. Now I picked uh, a pod, and it's not completely ripe, but here's one here, and I opened it up so you can see how the seeds are lined up nice and neat inside of the pods. And if I put the seeds down here into the water, you can see how they float. They land right on the surface of the pond, and then they can float. There they are. So now they're floating like little boats out there in the water. So when the wind starts to blow, They'll drift across the surface of the pond, and if they land somewhere, who knows, if they land right here where there's not a lot growing, they might start to sprout somewhere along here, or they may end up somewhere across the pond. You can see there's a few uh, mixed in across the other side of the pond. So this is one of the common pond plants here at the Nature Center whose seeds are able to float and are dispersed in the water. Here we are on the edge of the parking lot here at the Nature Center. And we have these um, water retention basins that are planted with a variety of um, different types of plants that can grow in wet environments. And you can see a very familiar looking and common plant right here. These tall, dark green slender plants with the sausage shaped seed pods on them. These are cattails. Cattails also use water to disperse their seeds. Cattails can float in the wind, but they, um, they really need to live in an aquatic environment. So these, um, these light fluffy seeds are actually really buoyant and they can float in clumps across the surface of the water and as they drop off or as the wind encourages them to uh, fall into the water. They will float across the surface of the water until they reach the shoreline, at which point then, if they're in the right spot, they can um, germinate and turn into a new cattail plant. So here you can see one of the pods already starting to uh, slowly um, come apart, and all that soft, white, fluffy stuff that cottony material provides the buoyancy for this, uh, these seeds to float. So cattails, another common 
aquatic plant using water to disperse its seeds. So one more plant that relies on water to disperse its seeds here at the Nature Center is this large shrub with those round seed pods. Here's a good look at one right there, if we can focus on it. There it is. This is buttonbush. Buttonbush is a pretty large shrub that grows in wetland areas. It grows in uh, floodplain forests. You can find it along lakes and reservoirs in our area, as well as um, riverbanks and other wet areas. And uh, this is the seed pod. They're not ripe yet. When they're ripe, they'll turn a nice brown color and that pod will fall apart and the seeds float in water also. So as the seeds float in water, they drift around, and if they're lucky enough to land in just the right spot, that seed can germinate and turn into another button bush plant. Now because this shrub grows in areas that don't have, don't always have moving or circulating water, um, it has another way of dispersing its seeds. If you kind of can see down through all of this uh, plant material, there we are. See how muddy it is down there, but there's no water. Um, that's because I'm out here in a seasonal wetland. So in the spring, in the first part of summer, this is completely full of water. But now, in the late fall, when it's really dry, this dries up. And so this plant can move around this uh, particular habitat by uh, dropping its seeds and the, the seeds floating in water. But to disperse long distances, this seed also relies on uh, birds like waterfowl to move its seeds. The little seeds are kind of triangle shaped and they can actually get stuck in the feathers of the bird, um, especially like along the belly area and around the legs. And if a, say like a wood duck moves in here, swimming around, ends up with a, uh, a seed or two on its um, body and then flies away and lands in another aquatic habitat, then the seeds can successfully move long distances in that manner as well. So um, first strategy is by water, second strategy is through sort of tagging along with wildlife. So another neat water dispersed plant is buttonwood.